Good What Up Wednesday. I'm not looking at the game right now. You're looking at the game on the other screen right now, obviously. What are you talking about? We're in the last couple seconds of the um, South Africa, Australia women's matchup in pool action. And it looks like South Africa is going to hold on to this. I'm not quite sure, though. I, they've, they've taken the clock down which means it's in the last 30 seconds. So, oh no, 124, I'm wrong. I just had something in the way. Hi, what up Wednesday, we're here. We are, in fact, talking about the Indoor World Cup today. And I know some of you are gonna say, but Keely, I'm not an indoor umpire. It has nothing to do with me. Why would I even study this? Because, because the more you watch indoor hockey, even though there are a few particular rules that only exist for indoor, the more you watch indoor, the more you see the speed, you see the decision-making. You've taken the middle two quadrants out of the pitch, you chucked them over your shoulder, and now you've got nothing but 23 and 23 action, and it is sublime. The first couple of days, I was like, oh, you know, I think, I think my team could do pretty well in this tournament because it just was, just felt really slow. Not anymore, not anymore friends, because we are almost at moving day. We're pretty darn close where it's the last day for teams to make their moves in their pools, which I always say, if you're in yellow, you hear me say this all the time. The last pool match day is the day that most of us just kind of go, oh, it's been a long time, but it's still not playoffs. I'm not really into this. Moving day is the day that you got to be ready. You got to be on top of things. And because that's when all the S hits the F. Just saying. It hits the F. I can say fan, right? I can say fan. Really good to see everybody in the comments, especially warm welcome back to Gideon. Haven't seen you for a hot minute. I'm glad you're here. And also Mike McCartney, who shared that comment about being uh, very keen. Indeed. It's almost like your colleague has met us, Mike. We are very, very keen. 
before we get into the content today, or maybe should I do topics first? Sure. I'll do the topics first. This is what we're talking about today. We're going to go through trapping because there's been some interesting things there. Some three meter infringements and interfering some stick block slash obstructions, playing the ball in the air and playing the ball while lying on the floor. Now I know a couple of those you're saying, oh, that's indoor. No, the three meter infringements, the principles still apply. So we've got a nice selection of juicy clips that I want you to pay some pretty close attention to. But before we get started, there was a couple really uh, cool things that happened during the broadcast. And let's see if I'm going to do this right. I have no idea. Oh, I didn't queue up that scene. But don't worry, I can do this on the fly. I've got this. First of all, have a listen. Shh, shh, you don't want to miss this. It, maybe you're up. I believe some people around the world are having watch parties. Uh, a good friend of yours, Keely Dunn and Co, having a watch party. So hi to all of them and Katarina and Co. If you're watching as a group of friends, have a little drinking game. Okay, hang on, we've got to watch it again. I believe some people around the world are having watch parties. Uh, a, a good, good friend, friend of yours, Keely Dunn and Co, Co, having a watch party. So hi to all of them and Katarina and Co. If, if you're, you're watching, watching as a group of friends, have, have a little drinking drink game. Every time Michelle talks, talks about an umpire, you have to have a drink. Whether it's good or bad, here goes Diane. Diane. I loved that. <laughs> Chabu getting right on jubes for the way she talks about umpires. She, you know, for for doing commentary and knowing that that is her area of, of particular expertise, but not her sole area of expertise. Very cool to hear Jubes talking about the umpiring. She's been very, uh, very constructive, very diplomatic, but she doesn't get into the weeds, which is why they will never ask me to do color commentary on matches. Cause I will weed the crap out of every scenario. Cause we've met, we've done this thing. Um, the last, the, 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 second cool thing that happened was here. Let me play this, be, uh, this is my first opportunity to commentate on Canada and my good friend Keely Dunn from Canada. It was her birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to Keely Dunn. Um, I don't get to do shout outs like that very often in my life. That's okay. There you go. True story. It was in fact my birthday on Sunday. And if you're my friend on Facebook, you would have seen this thing that happened. Um, and I, I put the score sheet up for proof because I don't believe it myself, but I do like to make sure I get the one when I score my season goal. And I call it a season goal because I only score one goal a season in indoor. And I usually don't score in outdoor. It's just, look, it's not my job. People have roles and that's not my job. And there I am. That was actually the game winner. And I was really kind of excited and that's why I'm sharing it with you all. And you can tell like, so, so that's Jack's on the end there, Nicole, Jack, and her daughter is looking at me going, why are you holding up 15? Cause yes, indeed I am. I am 15 years old. <laughs> Look, I was under pressure. Okay. I, how, I was supposed to go like this and see, see, I did it again. No, I should have done this and I didn't. But anyway, for those of you who went on Facebook and wished me happy birthday and I still haven't gotten back to you, I'm really sorry. It'll happen at some point. I only have about 170 notifications, so I'll go back and find them all. And thank you very much. It was a great day. The Indoor World Cup started on Sunday. So I spent the day watching and taking notes and it's just sort of prepping the whole tournament because it's a lot of back end work. You guys have no idea what I do on the back end to keep everything organized and that sort of thing. And then, yeah, went, played, scored, umpired two games, which were very enjoyable. So happy birthday to me is what I have to say. I have to blow the horn. Neil says I have to blow the horn. Is that working? Okay, let me try it here. Neil says I have to blow the horn for my own birthday. And I could throw confetti, but no, I'm good. Uh, all right. Let's see. Just make sure I haven't missed anything really important. I'm glad AJ's here and someone got called out. I don't know who got called out, but it was probably me at some point. Adam's here. What? An S Gill. Thank you for joining us live. Much appreciated. I'm so glad you're here. 
And, oh, and also, to, look, you picked the right show. If you were ever going to make a first show a first show, you'd pick the right one when you can wish me happy birthday. Oh, uh -huh. there you go. Yes, Maeve was very surprised. <laughs> and Keely goals. Yeah. I'm six, six years old. Thank you. Yes. Oh, for a new friend, but also for my birthday. Okay. I was getting a little confused there. All right. Let's get into the material. Did I get to everything? Let me just double check. I'm going to look on my screen deck. Um, uh, yeah, sure. That's good. That's good. Let's get into the stuff. There we go. We are talking about trapping. Now, before we get into the clips, I thought it would behoove us, I've used that word twice this week, to just take a little glander at glander, <laughs> a little glandular at the whole FIH briefing on trapping the ball because it's, it's, the, it's one of the weirdest rules. Like, I'm not saying it's the worst rule because there are far worse rules, but this is like just one of the, actually, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It, it's, it's the natural extension of the fact that in indoor, you can't raise the ball off the court unless you are shooting at goal, which means that if you are surrounded by flat sticks, you have nowhere to go. And what they've found over the years is that you can have these spots in play where things get bogged down and players just stand there with the ball because it's really difficult to sort of go after the ball when it's on a player stick. I try to tell everybody, like my teammates, like if the ball's on your stick, you're probably good. You're, you're probably, you know, cause people can't just hit it off or they can't, they can't fling it upwards or anything like that. It's, it's really difficult if you have that firm control. So what they've had to do in order to combat this uh, egregious problem with indoor is to introduce trapping rules, which include things like holding the ball against the sideboards, uh, but also that the opponents can't ring around a player especially not with three players, like a stick at 90, at 180, and then at 90 again, ringing around a player who's on the boards because then they've got absolutely nowhere to go. And the best phrase in the rule book, an outlet of reasonable size must be presented. It's, an, it's a rodent of usual size, right? Everybody knows this. <laughs> uh, so an outlet of reasonable size has to be left and what umpires will do is make sure that that outlet is first of all given and reasonable size usually means about stick length, stick width because, you know, laying a stick flat, it's easy to see. And that seems to be a reasonable place where a, a player in possession of the ball could send the pass and the umpire will indicate You've got sideboards, you've got backline. Backline, use it, use it, use it. So they'll talk about those things. Now, what's sort of come through in the briefing and in the examples that they used in the 2022-2023 indoor briefing, and if you don't have a copy of this, make sure you head on over to the server. It is in the resources channel, and you'll be able to download it from there or go to the FIH website and, and download it there too. And... They've, they've talked about sort of really, they've, they've gotten a lot more directive about the penalties that we should be giving in certain situations when those are trapped. So let's go through ex a few examples and we will pull these up. We will do that and we will, um, and I'll go through them pretty quickly. I just want to get an idea of where you're standing, but I need to, I got a lot of clips today. It's indoor. Okay. It's indoor. Here's our first one. Can you hear the umpire communicating? Backline is open. And the choices here it. are, I don't know. Cat's got no, them. It's the Czech Republic ball. I've got them somewhere. So I've slowed this down quite a bit. You can talk about whether this needs to be a free push for the defense. By the way, defense being the player in red. Happens to be Canada. And uh, the attackers being in blue. That's uh, Czech. And... Should it be a free push to the fence? Should there be a 
free push to the attack, a penalty corner or something else. So let's see when we get that sort of thing. And Rachel, you know it. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. I'm looking the wrong place. Inconceivable. It's just, I don't think that word means what you think it means. Just saying. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Thank you, everybody who's been wishing me a happy birthday, by the way. On there, uh, the audio clips are coming through twice with a fractional timing gap. So what we have is some slapback. And I don't know um, where I'm probably doing that, but I'm probably doing that in loopback. So I'll, I'll have a look while you guys are watching this replay and answering the quiz. If it's, if it's coming up, let's see, you don't got them. You don't got them. Did I not? Okay. There it is. And yeah, I did, I did update it in the, uh, in the moderators channel there. So there you are. Let's just see what's going on with my loop back here. And I got to get over here and I have to open loop back and I have to find loop back and there it is. And I wonder if the problem is this. Let me know if you can still hear me because <laughs> if you can't and I'll go back to this clip back and make sure you can hear that too. You can hear the umpire communicating. Backline back is open, not using it. Okay. So it's Let's just, just see what Scott's ball. got to say here. Nails, it's no, no, no bullies. Hi, David. Nice to see you. Um, let's see. Scott, you'd probably have to be careful saying, saying things like you've got the back on. Your friends will say you talk too much. You... You need to ensure you want uh, coaching the players. So Scott, this th this is something that I, I, I mean, I understand people's reticence about this because this is actually directive, but the briefing and all the coaching and the guidance that we're getting from the top levels from the FAH is you have to communicate this to the players, okay? You're being proactive as to where the outlet is and that they have to take it. If they don't take it, you're going to be calling a free push against them or potentially something more. Okay. So you, th this isn't an area where you get to say, oh, I don't really want to be seen to be coaching the players because not only are you telling the player, the outlet that they need to take, but you're also instructing the opposition to provide that outlet. So it evens up. And the whole point of this, that you're doing this is not to tell players how to win but how to keep the flow going in a way that doesn't require you to blow your whistle because nobody wants you to do that. So I hope that helps. And let's see. Yeah. Easier to mention the color of the shirts. Absolutely. So yeah, red is defenders. Blue are attackers here. Okay. And Darren bragging about name dropping. Look, I'm the only one who name drops around here back off. That's my game. You can hear me and the clip is better too. Excellent. And David wants a free push to red. Okay. Interesting. Let's see. We've got the, we've got the poll coming. So vote really quickly. Cause I'm going to move to the next one. Let's see what taco's got to say here. If you use the voice instead of the whistle, then use it. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I know that sounded really, really, um, declarative for you, but I'm not sure exactly what you mean by it. Okay. You missed the red defenders. You put defenders, but you meant the free hit, free push, free push. Don't put FH in there. It's been one of the bugbears. Um, Dennis probably isn't on the broadcast because he's probably teaching right now. But my local umpire friend here, Dennis Saconini, was texting me last night saying, if they call it a free hit one more time, I'm going to lose my ass. And I'm like, you're, it's like we're friends because you get mad like I do about things like that. 
You weren't sure it was a defense or attack. Yeah, sorry. It's it's good to know if um cat, if you want to do translations, I don't know if you can, but I just went free push. So to all those things. Um, let's see. Andrew, good question. Are you allowed to actively push the ball with your hand while it's holding the stick? And it's a bit fuzzy. The hand is part of the stick. If by using your hand, you're able to take advantage of the protection that your glove is affording you in that moment and be able to use leverage. So if you have the ball, you know, nestled up next to your glove and it's in between a little, little crook there with your stick, then that is not going to be allowed because you are taking advantage of the, the glove that is there. But if, if you, if you are, if you are pushing the ball along the ground, along the, along the floor with your hand, it's going to be okay. Luke. Oh, you're going in hard. Are you? You're now considering it a PC for the intentional obstruction outside the circle. What kind of obstruction are you seeing it? Cause I'd like to know because you initially thought that it was a free push attack as the defender didn't use the outlet that was provided, but you notice the defender brings her whole arm down to stop the attacker from continuing a legitimate attacking attempt, tackling attempt. But there you go. Scott being proactive and giving instruction that must be taken. Isn't coaching. Keep the flow of the plane going. Okay. Yes. You're welcome, Scott. I hope that helps. And it, it, this is a, just a really particular situation in indoor. I'm not going to be, you know, the, the, the balance point is in different places for most of our other things, like not outside yet, not outside yet. If you say, take it outside on a penalty corner injection, you're getting a little fuzzier there because they could do whatever they want whenever they want, but you're just giving them the information as to what you've seen so far which will explain the call that you ultimately have to make. This is different. And I, I think in five years, we won't need to do that. So many of these rules, when they change and interpretations and guidance comes down, we have to take a certain approach until we can embed it in our hockey culture. And everybody, many people complain to me, but Keely, it's got to be in the rule book. You can't have these understandings or this culture or consensus or everybody just knows this. Well, we do. We do. It's, it's just called knowing the game. And if we wrote down every single little thing that dictates how our game is played, our rule book would be 300 pages long. And it would have to do with, you know, we'd be, we'd be describing instances of ball, uh, body contact and things like that. So aerials have been going through changes like that for the last 20 years because the skill has been evolving and we've been changing the rule and it's been really, really like small little baby pieces until in about another 10 years, there's not going to be an aerial rule. There's just going to be danger. But right now we have to teach everybody how to not be idiots. Uh, no, really, that's what we have to do. Okay. I don't know what that music was that just popped in your head. You totally missed the circle as you were looking at the ball. Ah, it's definitely a ball. <laughs> uh, from Mike McCartney, blue closes the outlet that you see initially in the TV angle from the center wall. Blue 11 blocks the sideline outlet throughout. Okay. And you can hear, if we go back to the actual video, this should be back more line. clear now. There's a, back line. can hear the umpire communicating. Back line. back line is open, not using it. So it's a Czech Republic ball. Okay. Let's get to your, let's get to your votes here. And see what you said. And I'm going to try something and I'm just going to pull this bad boy onto this scene. All right. So 62% of you wanted to free push the attack, which is what the decision was on the pitch. Uh, free push defense for 30% of you. 6% of you wanted a PC. 
And somewhat along the lines of what Luke Dawkins said earlier, to me, this is a penalty corner because it is intentional trap of the ball against the boards by the red player. She gets this pressure in from behind and she puts her, 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 her stick, but her glove happens to be attached to it, puts her stick down and traps the ball against the boards. And this was the very first, let's see if I can go back to it. This was the very first part of it. Players must not trap or hold the ball against the sideboards. She's stopping the tackle from coming in. Now, whether that tackle should be coming in from there or there's a potential obstruction there, that's a different call. But the first thing that happens is that the ball is trapped against the boards. That is an intentional action. To me, that is a penalty corner in this case. So that's what I would be deciding there. Um, you know, Mike, when you say things like this, makes it very difficult. <laughs> when hand is on the stick as part of the stick, you thought that if the ball would have hit the stick, when the bread player pushes with hand, it's using the side of hand, it wouldn't have hit stick. Ah, that's getting too particular. That's, a, that's, that's just too fussy. For you, when blue reached for the ball, she pushed the red stick away, therefore free push the red. Yeah. And blue closes the opening that was there, except the problem is, is that red is making no attempt to go to that. She is, she, she's hearing the, 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 the instruction, but she's not going. There is no, there is no sideboard outlet. Okay. There is no sideboard outlet there at all. And red is not moving to outlet the ball. She is continuing to hold it and trap it. I think what the umpire called was just the not using the outlet part of it. For me, it's actually the trapping along the boards, which is the fun part of it. So let me just get another couple comments and then we'll uh, go like that. There we go. Uh, Denman, you haven't managed. <laughs> you guys are great. You guys aren't idiots at all, Stephen. Which happens blue, first, blue to closing the outlet of the baseline to red trapping the ball. Uh, to me, red trapping the ball. Yep, I, I understand, Taco, that there was a third attacker. And and I guess if if that attacker comes in and the red player then is curling and she's ready to go, it, just because the ball is on the boards doesn't mean that players can't try to tackle, right? What we have to try to discern is... Like we can't see from this angle if the, the third attacker has now come down to cordon off the, the boards as it's going off the baseline. So let's take that out of the equation. Let's assume it's not because it doesn't matter because we're not evaluating the truth of this scenario. That is the second defender that's coming in and she is allowed to try to tackle the ball. This is not a free play. Like nobody gets to try to take the ball situation for that that ball carrier. Okay. And we, and it's a, it's a fine line and that's why this rule sucks so much, but, but the attempt has to be made and it has to be circulated. So I'm looking for a penalty corner on this because of the action of putting her, putting her glove and her stick against the ball and pushing it into the boards and preventing a tackle from coming in. Um, well, it's, it's not that it's, it's not smart. I'm not criticizing. I mean, hell I've done really much more stupid things when playing indoor, at, uh, for sure taco. So I'm, you know, it's, it's not about that. It's, it's not a bad maneuver because really all she did was she gave up a free push to the attack. So it's a chance worth taking. Okay. Let's go on to our next example here. To Argentina, but Argentina, even though they're up, they're still rushing at Australia. Oh. But Australia making good work of this by defending their circle. Sideboard! Sticks Side on the park. Sideboard! And well blown there by Sean Edwards. Okay. So that's Sean on the far side. Baz is on the close. And this is another similar situation. We're looking for whether this, whether you would have played on for this, a free push for the defense, which incidentally what was given. So a free push for yellow. Uh, a free push to attack, which is 
blue, blue and white. Uh, or a penalty corner. I, I just threw it in. You don't have to vote for that. In fact, don't. Okay. So let's see what you've got on this one. And why did I not think of the pulling the screenshot of the votes onto the replay screen? Why didn't I? <sighs> it's a good thing I thought of that. Rado, let's see what you got. He's pulling out the rule book, so he's got something to say. Repeated instances of players trapping the ball against the sideboard should be viewed as an intentional offense and penalized accordingly. Yep. So, but for me, it's, you know, that one is, that doesn't need to be repeated. In order for it to be considered intentional. Jolt. Are we friends off? I know you're joking. I know you're joking. How do I do that? Wait, I'll do this one. How dare you? <sighs> Restart with, so the reason that the FIH got so prescriptive about trapping and how you needed, how umpires needed to call free pushes and occasionally penalty corners instead of just continuing to call bullies all the time is because a bully is almost as bad as the ball just not moving like it is right here in this scenario. Almost as bad. They suck. Nobody likes them. I'm serious. They're bad. So they, they don't want to, they don't want the umpires to be reverting to that, especially because that can be a much better option, but it tends just to keep the, the play exactly where it was exactly in the same problem, the same players involved, the same area of the pitch, all that kind of stuff. And what they want to do is open the game back up from this stagnancy. So there you go. Hindsight does tend to be an exact science. There you go. Hi, Ian. Good to see you. You must not be umpiring tonight. Taco, and the other ones, you don't believe it's umpired this way, but according to the FIH rules, you understand the free push defense. Uh, if it's not umpired that way yet in the Netherlands, it's because that's a not yet. It needs to be. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. Because this is, in fact what you have to see. So I'm interested in seeing what you are looking for in this. Uh, only when <laughs> it's only a bully when Pelmer is umpiring. Shots fired, says Luke. That's the one I'm looking for. And oh, we've got some more finable name dropping. Dale. I don't know if you've been on the broadcast before, but if you have not, there's your air horn. He is stoked to say that one of those Aussie defenders is his son's best mate. So <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. So just another couple seconds here and then I'm going to end the poll. What? No, 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 Baz. That's not how this works. You don't get to see what we all say about you behind your back during a tournament. I don't like, I'm pretty sure the rules are clear. Don't worry. I don't think I've picked on you at all in this one. Uh, so you'll recognize this one, Baz. And what was interesting is the commentators actually really liked this call. So there you go. So let's end the poll. Uh, Baz, you don't get to vote ever. And let's see what we've got here. 38%, oh yeah, 38% of you wanted to play this on. Okay. Now remember we heard in the audio portion of this that you could hear Spud saying, sideboards, sideboards, sideboards. I also want you to look at the clock. Look at the clock. Look at the clock, the clock, okay? Look at the score, look at the clock. Q4, four minutes left. We are in barn burner time. Things are happening. And taking seconds off by dribbling passively against the boards is exactly what the FIH doesn't want to see. Okay? So... <laughs> Look, 
It's madness. None of you ever follow my instructions, ever. You don't get to vote. I'm sorry. There you go. Um, penalty quarter, I don't know where that came from, but free push to Pence for 55% of you, okay? So it's, this is tough. This is going to be new. And if you're on the court and you're making this kind of decision, first, you want to be just as proactive as Sean was here in very clear instructions where the ball is going to go. And this goes back to what Scott mentioned just before about, oh, I'm not sure about coaching. This is okay. <laughs> because you don't want to be having to call that kind of, that kind of foul in this kind of situation. You just want the ball to get circulating. Okay. And Argentina is down a player too. Exactly. There you go. Well recognized. Okay. So that is that. Let's move on to the next one. Over. Hey! Kazakhstan right oh up there. Gosh. Three of them right in the close corner. And there we go. No, no, no. Uh, no goal, says the umpires. No goal. Go. 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 I think go. it was because of a hit. Go. 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 Here we go. Baz, you gotta you gotta take it down a couple notches. You're just you're you're redlining your audio like you wouldn't believe. There you go. Yes, absolutely. Um really good positioning. And and you'll see it again on this one too. It's under, you know, I've been talking a lot through all the watch parties about positioning and, you know, I have different views on what position, excellent positioning is in indoor. But when the moment requires for you to be high up to help, then that's exactly what you should be doing. I also believe that a, a controlling umpire can be further inside the court and they can see very well because in this moment, um, let's see. So Baz is looking through quite a few bodies, but his colleague, whose name I'm going to mispronounce, um, is not going to, is, it has a much clearer view of everything that's happening. So I talk about fluid trading responsibilities. Who's got the best view? It's not because of where the ball is, according to some chart that you draw on a, on a, on a pitch diagram. It's where is the ball? vis-a-vis -vis all of the players and where are you and where's your colleague and which direction is the play flowing and that sort of thing. And in that case, the, fl the pl play is flowing towards um, Nanaranchu. I'm going to say it wrong. See? And then, and that's, that's going to be, he's going to have the best opportunity to even sell the decision as well. Great support. I'm not, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Baz because he's going to be mad. But there you go. Yeah, this happens. There you go. And it is proactive. And, and Baz, what I was saying is that it's just, this is a very new thing that I think in about, you know, maybe by the next World Cup, but definitely by the one after that, none of you are going to have to be saying this because it'll be that well understood by top international players. So the amount of proactivity that you're going to have to use in, in getting these players sorted, you're not going to have to do as much at all. And no kissing up. Pelmore, come on. Okay, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this poll. <laughs> not end the broadcast. End the stream because that's very liable to happen. Okay, so let's see how y'all did here. Yep. 77% of you wanted the free push defense A 22% of you were still looking for a goal, but no, because the outlet cannot be interfered with. So you've got the two players who are trapping and taking away the sideboard and the ball has to be allowed to travel across through the designated space that the umpires defined without interference. So that is definitely interference. If number 17 holds back and waits until the B Belgian player receives that ball, then you've got a bit of a different story. You've potentially got, I think, a contestable ball, but you cannot interfere with the outlet. So it has to be a free push for the defense. Thanks for all of you who voted. And I'll deal with Palmer's comment just before we move on.
Uh, Oz goalkeeper nearly gone to hot water on his knees at the edge of the D at the end of the clip there. Yeah, almost. Yes. Out means out. Okay, excellent stuff. As we see, because the last one in trapping. All in, but uh, same game. He just was not quick enough, and the Belgium goalkeeper was. Yeah, you, and here's exactly that yeah, example that I was speaking saying, on earlier. Use it. Across the goals, and he now has resulted in. But again, a long corner interference. for Kazakhstan. Okay, so we're not even voting on this one because you guys know the answer, and also Baz is here, so he, this cannot be interfered with. The ball has to go, and that's. That's barely a stick length, and then he interferes with it anyway. So it's got to be a free out. Okay, good stuff, everybody. Let's move it along. And hopefully no more clips where Baz is directly involved. Three meter inter infringements and interfering, and I don't know why I had to say both, but I just kind of had to for some reason. Here come the, here come the chicks. So on this next one, I'm looking for your feedback and your thoughts as to whether this is a free push for the attack, which is blue. If this is a free push for the attack plus a card, is this a penalty corner or is this a penalty corner plus a card? I don't think there's any question that number seven on red interferes or infringes on the three meters that's given here. Okay. That's the spot of the free push. The initial player who commits the foul, whose ball, whose foot, uh, is it plays the ball. She runs back very effectively and, and out of the lane, but number seven doesn't ever disengage from the three meters away. She, in fact, the way she, she runs, she's, like, oh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. That's the spot that it's taken from. And then infringement happens. Okay. Gideon, why are these examples of deliberate infringements carded? Why aren't they? Seems no different to a deliberate breakdown outdoor. I don't know, Baz, you tell me. I know you're not on this game. I'm not saying this is your responsibility, but why, why are they not being carded? This, this was a very interesting game to watch because there was a lot of frustration on, <laughs> on the whole thing. The poll is now up, so please go ahead and vote so we can get through some of these more quickly. We're already at quarter two. Oh my God. And I think it's it, the thing with indoor, as I want to say, my favorite cliche is that you're, you've compressed the 60 minutes of outdoor decision-making it you've, you've compressed it fivefold in an indoor match. So you have five times more decisions. You have five times more impact of things that happen five times more likely a mistake you make is going to have an impact on what happens right there, but there are so many decisions and they have to be made in one fifth of the time. You have no time for this at all. So when you look at the effectiveness of that breakdown there, and you're all voting, so I hope you're all, you know, I, you, you better vote really quickly because I am going to end the poll and then you're not going to have a chance to get in there. So I'll give you about 10 more seconds from now that I've said it, which means I have to give you 30 seconds. Ah, this is hard. So that player, that attacker in blue has a player inside the circle that she could have outlet that ball to quite quickly if she had more time to see the space that was in front of her. She's dead set in the middle of the court, which is a great place to attack from an indoor. We all know that. So to me, this is something that I would card. Any time, any game, any time of game, all that stuff. 
Let's see what your call is because I have ended the poll. I'm being merciless this time. Okay, so 66% of you want the free push, the attack and the card. And 22% of you are looking for the penalty corner. This is the interesting part, okay, is that the guidance has just shifted from any interference with whether it's a five meter and outdoor or three meter and indoor with the taking of that free hit slash push. It used to be that we went by where that free was taken from, but now the guidance has shifted. The briefing f formally says, and I should have clipped this. I'm really sorry. You can get on my case about this. If anybody wants to find it and pop it in the server while we're talking, I would be much appreciated. But now it is, where does the infringement occur? Where does the disadvantage occur? Which makes sense as well. It makes sense both ways. It also doesn't make sense in both ways. So there we go. Okay. I have secret messages in my messenger. I can't do that while I'm on a live stream. YouTube and Facebook living together. It's like cats and dogs. It's chaos. I can't do that. I also use WhatsApp. Uh, taco, the actual place number seven made the taco was less than three meters, but the influence was already before. Greater than three meters? Greater than three meters. I was smart before COVID. Can we put it that way? There you go. Um, so yes, I think had you said that the infringement actually starts and she is disadvantaged inside the defending half, not in the attacking half, I, I would buy that. I would also buy the argument that actually the infringement is after that center line. So you could sell either one to me, obviously the free, the, the free push attack in the card is going to be an easier sell, making sure that you get the ball replaced behind that center line. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be a lot easier to manage than the corner and the, the card. But if you've got it, you've got it. And if you feel really that the impact of the offense was at that level, go nuts. That's what I say. Okay, which one is this? A. Going so far, right. but with Next only one. 50 seconds remaining, it's looking right. more and more like Australia are going to suffer their first defeat of the 2023 <laughs> FIH Indoor Hockey World Cup. And it is a penalty corner awarded. Cat like is very Empire busy is trying to get these polls up. The I really card. appreciate all your help, Cat. So this one should be pretty easy. You got to vote right away. Okay. No, no delaying, no dilly dallying on the old decisions here. Because we are looking at the following things in this moment. I should get my music playing. Why is my music not playing? There we go. My soothing music will start. So We're looking at a few things and I don't think we have the time marker. The timestamp. This was really late in the game. I think there was 40 seconds left on the clock or less. Oh, here we go. Timestamp just disappears. 40 seconds left and they, they, they take it off because sometimes they, uh, they, they get that screwed up. How do you fix it? Oh no. PC and card is the missed option. Okay, don't worry about it. We don't we don't have to vote because this one's really easy. There is no right answer in the pool. Because <laughs> Radislav is absolutely convinced, I think, from reading this, that the PC and the card is the right option. Okay, impact of the offense, time in the game. Add those two together. And it's not enough. Even if nothing else has happened before this game, if you were at 40 seconds left and a team is trying to preserve a lead, 
even though it's a two goal lead at this point, it would be hard to score two goals in indoor, but it's not impossible, not at all. So the yellow card is absolutely the right, even though it doesn't matter because there's only 40 seconds left, it's the message you're sending about that. And in tournament situations, yellow cards do accumulate in the sense that it becomes a matter of the code of conduct that all the players sign before they get to step out onto the court. So there you go. Um, let's see. I don't know if we're on the, still on the same poll, but don't worry about it. I'm just going to end this because I don't want anybody to get all upset that their, their vote was improperly tallied. Okay. I don't want you to be all like that. Penalty stroke and card, card, card. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we didn't get the, the corner and the card in there. And that was probably my fault. I'll, I'll bite this one. How do you vote what Sean said? I actually have an op... <laughs> I was going to have an option for that for the next poll, but... Coming out there. It's it's not that it's nonchalant, because there, there would be a lot more... Like, I would be the asshole out there being like... Right? There's no sass involved there. It's a very calm, matter of fact m way of presenting a card, which is why it was just so beautifully done. So think about how subtle little body cues, and he's not even, he's not even making direct eye contact with the player that he's sending off. He doesn't need to, he's like, Right? Very different than that level of eye contact really makes a difference. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. Hockey, but they're also putting up a good fight here. And they see themselves turning over the ball here in the center of the field. Oh, umpire Lyndall Robinson just uh, saying none of that, please. Okay, so our options but here are outdoor hockey, but they also putting a free up a good push fight the here. attack. And, and in this moment, that's red. Okay. The ball here. Red has been awarded the free hit, so they are the free push. So they are the attacking team. So a free push to red, free push to red plus a card, or a penalty corner to red, or a penalty corner plus a card. Okay, this is earlier in the same game, but this is. Maybe an explanation as to why we weren't getting cards later either. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. And you guys are so sick and tired of me saying this. But if you pass up on your opportunities to set out your stall, you are going to be guessing and calculating and weighing throughout the rest of the match as to whether this is the one that you're going to get. Oh, but it wasn't as bad as that one. Uh, yeah, it's not It's not as clear. Oh, it didn't have as much impact as that one that I didn't take up. Or the one that I only warned on. So I'm not going to take that. And I, I just, I know that there are a lot of conversations and there's a lot of belief out there with many of the absolute best umpires in the world that they don't want to get into cards too soon. And I say, prove it to me. Prove it to me that in a match where you set your standards early by using your cards, that that technique doesn't work. Because I see you, I see the top umpires proving it to me over and over again when they do take the approach of pulling the cards out. The proof is there. So let's see what you have to say. Vote quickly, vote quickly and get this over with. This is the same kind of play that you would see in an outdoor match. Okay. The, I believe that the defender in blue has given up the free push because of a raise on the tackle. Maybe it was a stick obstruction. Maybe it was her foot. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but it's pretty darn clear that that ball is not going her way right around the center line as well. We talk about this in outdoor that right around the 23 is where you're, wait a minute. They're trying to break down the play before I can upgrade that to a penalty corner. And making sure and look at the flood of players who come back. 
the impact of having one more player, two more players, your entire team back behind in defensive structure instead of the play flowing towards your goalkeeper and you, your teammates are racing back. It's a massive difference. And to get a flowing game, these things need to be dealt with. Let's see what you had to say. I'm ending the poll. Yeah, this was the first opportunity of the game, Godders, and this is what I do in the watch parties. I write them down. I write them down. And then I watch to see what happens in the rest of the game. And I'm never wrong. So we want a free push to the attack and a card for in that 66% of you, and the rest of you want a PC and a card. There we go. I like that division. That's pretty cool. We have the same problem as to whether it's in or out, whether the infringement's in and out. And e, I don't know. I don't care. Sell it. Sell it whichever way you're going to go with it. But give, you know, you, you could give a penalty corner solely at this point. If it's the first time that there's been a three meter infringement breakdown. Yep, you could. Because you have the upgrade option. If that if that is there. Okay. So as far as you can tell, Rachel, it's in the other half. So you give the PC and that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Think about the impacts. Think about the game that you want the players to understand how they're going to be playing for the rest of this and how important it is for you to get in there. Important equalizer. So playing with six outfield players, no goalkeeper back. Note the Into time Canada. in the game. They're just going to hold on to the, the ball. score. Two minutes remaining now. It's getting very physical out there. You can see Samantha Lee being pushed out of the way by Lucina. I was Ali Lee, not Samantha Lee, but that's okay. Okay, so you have a foul coming from behind. First, stick obstruction. And Taco, this is probably from the, from the last scenario. And so, yes, it was from the last scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Green card is perfect. It's perfect. One minute. It's an indoor. It's a one minute is a lot, but it's just, it's just a minute. <laughs> you want the players to be pulling out of those things as the game goes on. If they truly can't help it, then there's nothing to deter. But if they can make a better effort. So let's see what you have here on this one. I'd like to know whether you're happy with this, whether this is a play on, it's a simple free push for the attack again, close to the center line. Pretty obvious foul coming in from the defenders who are in red. Let's see what you have. I know the poll hasn't gone up yet. I'm hoping. Kat's just like, she's swearing. She's over there in the Netherlands and she is swearing so hard at me. <laughs> she's like, there's too many things to copy and paste. I wish there was a better way and I wish we could set these up beforehand, but we can't. I don't see any comments though. I want to see the comments. What's everybody saying? We have 39 people watching right now, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Hi. Now, first of all, vote. Second of all, give me one of these. It matters. It matters. I thank each and every one of you though, who watch and who engage because you are the reasons that I, you're the reason I'm so smart. No, you, you guys push me and I know that I have to be on the top of my game if I'm going to be able to convince you all as well. So let's see, <laughs> cat's really acting. Number five is a great actor who can be rewarded with a Grammy. 
a yellow Grammy in a square. Yeah, two or four. It To me, it depends. The defender could have gotten out of the way. She did a great job of just standing up, but making sure she was just standing up really firmly right in that fantastic lane. All she had to do was pivot one step and the player was going to be by her. And it can, it can be difficult. And this one, you can say, well, th- no, the Czech player is going straight at her. The Czech player has to try to get around her. Well, when you've got the board or the sideline in outdoor and, but even in indoor, it's even more difficult because there are fewer spaces. The spaces are smaller. It's more constricted. Okay. It really does make a difference when a player both occupies and continues to occupy that space. Oh my God, somebody's going to make me cry. It's not so bad. I know, it's shocking. Somebody somebody watched the Grammys on the weekend. Players are so coached to deliberately foul whilst, favorite word, uh, whilst waving their hands in the air innocently. They are. Mabeno, thank you. I'm glad I can help. That means a lot to me. Appreciate it. So I am going to end this poll and I'm going to bring up the results. You guys are getting better. (laughs) Someday I want 100%. I want 100% on a poll that agrees with my view. (laughs) 81% of you want a free push and a card. And then 18% of you are just giving the free push. Free push alone isn't enough. (laughs) This is a very effective breakdown of play. And there are two minutes left in a one goal game. Fourth quarter. Gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. You're looking forward to enduring umpire next season. Yes, queen. Let's do it. Okay, last one. Eight seconds. Same to the game. End of all the game. What? How are these all from the same game? Czech Republic still fighting tooth and nail. Why is she picking to try on her own win this back. It's getting physical out there. You can see the desperation of the Czech Republic saying that I couldn't hear the whistle. There is YouTube math involved. You're absolutely right, Rachel. (laughs) YouTube math. This this one was so hard for me when I was watching because Elise, Elise Wong is a lovely, like the loveliest of lovely human beings. She is just, you know, like literally, I, I, yeah, I just can't say, I, I, I don't want to talk about the reasons why she's just an amazing person and just a sweetheart. So <laughs> this is why we have to detach the actions of the players from our opinion of their, their goodness. Cause it doesn't, this is sport. This is just sport. They're just trying to win. Okay, they're just trying to win, so it's it, it doesn't it it doesn't make them bad people. But if we don't deal with these things properly, we're not good umpires. We have to deal with them. Pretty please comment which poll is this one. Okay, um, this should be two E. It should be two E. Free push to the attack. Penalty corner, penalty corner and card, free push to defense. So this is the same game, same score line. We now have less than a minute left. Attackers who are down a goal are driving to the, to this end, to this end. (laughs) 
So you have to vote very quickly. Shan, in the previous one, would it be a two minute or four minute? I don't know. It depends on what happened beforehand. Given the impact, if that had been the only, the only infringement, which it wasn't, all game, then, and there, and there hadn't been cards, I would have gone with a, a, a yellow two. Okay. Um, which would have nicely set this up to be a yellow four. <laughs> oh, did I just say that out loud? I did. When things like this are happening late in the game, it means that things were happening earlier in the game, except on the rare times where having committing the foul and preventing the breakdown is just done as a, Hey, I'll take the card. I would rather the card and the stroke, the card and the corner. I'd rather that four minute yellow than I would for this player to go in one-on-one -on -one with my goalkeeper, which is a very reasonable decision for a player to make. If that is the weighing of the options that they've done, that's fine. And again, it's sport. It's not because they don't like you. It, it's not because you know, they're a bad person or you're a bad person or anybody's bad people out here. It's just sport. So the personal part of the penalty is just simply that it's addressed at the person who has conducted the action, not that it's not a judgment. So we, we don't want to, we need to understand that the cards are because of the impact on the game and how we want each player to be making individual decisions as that game continues. Why is the crowd so sparse? Were the, their entry restrictions? No, there, there wasn't. Um, the matches are going for t 14 hours a day. There are 12 matches that extend over 14 hours. There's 10 minutes in between the matches and they go from the morning, uh, you know, right through the evening. So it's going to be hard for them to get, um, if Baz is still here, he'll, he'll tell us exactly, um, what the, uh, he'll tell us the, the local starting time. All I know is it starts at 1130 my time PM. It's all I know every day. It's a lot of matches. And so on a weekday, it's going to be hard to find people. So what they've done is they've, they've asked for all the school kids. If you're wearing your uniform, you don't have to go to school. You can <laughs> Jubes was talking about it the last game. Okay. New Zealand, Australia. She's, she's doing commentary. And she was like, yeah, just skip school. Wear your uniform, come here. You get in for free and you can just come and cheer for, and watch some great hockey. <laughs> She's a teacher. It's awesome. I love it. Okay. It does make sense. Okay. I'm glad it makes sense, Shannon. I'm working really hard for that. It's kind of my like life goal. Do I make sense? Am I on drugs? You know, you're not sure why this is a free hit attack in the first place. I mean, it's, it's hard to see exactly what happens and I'm not judging that part. We're not judging that part. Okay. Uh, number eight first touches the attacker. Sure. And this is why video referral and indoor would be a nightmare. <laughs> it's just not okay. All right. Shutting this pole down. Let's go. Let's go. No mercy. Hopefully Baz has gone to bed. It's late. So PC in a card, 84% of you, it's getting better. PC, 7%. Okay, still want the card. Okay. And free push defense for 7% of you because Mike decided that he thinks that that's a clean tackle. I disagree, but come on, play the game. All right. Only 13 votes. Come on. Where's the rest of you? There's 32 of you watching. I need, I need statistical validation. I can come back to these afterwards and know what's going on. Okay. Let's go. Oops. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. First game is 830 local. Yeah. So, and... I'm not sure if that was the first game. That, I don't think it was the first game of the day, but it was early. So let's be nice. 
And the last game starts at 9.20 local time, which is late. <sighs> Mike. No, I don't agree. Stop trying to be clever. Stick a block obstructions. We've we've gone through most of them. There's only a couple for the each of these. Got video analysis here. But I love um, this clip. The video staff working hard behind the scenes to strategize against the opposition. A good run down the left hand flank by Lorraine Delfage. She feels a bit hard done by and not being able to. Yeah, I think so that she will be a bit frustrated. Here it is. Uh, there was a stick check, but I think on that one it was also a bit of a stick shield. So so here's our voting it's, options. It's a tough one to umpire against. What's your call? Is it a free push for the attack? The player in red. Is it a penalty corner for the player in red? Is it a free push to the defense against the player in red? Or is it a center line restart? Center line restart? I think I meant nine meter restart. Sorry. I just love this. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? She also won player of the match uh, for all that. I don't think for this game, For I think for a different game. I think it was the game after this that Belgium actually one so yes the poll will come <laughs> she <laughs> yes just in case oh my camera has turned off that's fun don't mind me let's see if it comes back on again if it doesn't this is going to be an awkward day all right hi she, she did score a great goal. Um, okay, I don't know what's happening. You know, Mike, I don't like you very much. I don't know what's happening here. So I need to do this, but I think you've seen enough replays. So I'm just gonna open up my camera switcher. We have other options. I mean, this is a new one. This is one that has not happened to me before. Hi. This isn't awkward at all. Um, how am I gonna do this? There we go. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Do to do, do. Wow. I don't know what's going on, but and I have to train myself not to look at the camera that I've been looking at for the last hour, but look at this camera instead. It's just walked out. So everybody has everybody voted? Has everybody voted yet? Do we have a vote? Yes, I know. I think, I think that Mike McDowell is, see, I keep looking up. I think Mike McDowell is um, doing, doing some magic over on his end. You vote to always have an FIH umpire on the playing field. Uh, yeah, I think it's amazing. She did score a great goal. Hartmut sees a stick block. There we go. The camera needs to be restarted with a bully. The camera needs to stop being a bully, I think, is what's really going on here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I can't look in the right place. How? You voted. Thanks, David. Uh, to be fair, you thought my lights went out? It's it's one o'clock in the afternoon. How many lights do I need? How many lights do I need? David, what happened to my camera? What happened to my Sony and why all of a sudden is it broken? This is a 
bad scene. And she's the captain as well. I know, isn't that just so amazing? Okay, I'm going to end this poll because... <laughs> Happy three, mom. Good to see you. If you're new, hello. Hello. What's happened is I'm having camera troubles. So now I'm on my FaceTime camera and I don't look nearly as cute as I usually do. And we're also looking at Olympic gold medal umpire, Lorene Del Forge, stick blocking in an indoor match. Only 65% of you saw it that way. <laughs> the, re is, the rest of you were okay with playing that on for the 9 meter restart. Call's got to come. Okay, the big part for this is the separation. It's not the only factor, but it certainly is one of those sort of aggravating factors. Let's see if I can pause it right at the moment here. Right there. Okay. can't not look at the right wrong camera. Uh, load shedding is contagious. Yeah, my camera's load shedding. Okay, let's go to the next Save one. This, this is happening. Here are your options for this one. It is either playing advantage or play on, whatever. Vote either one of those. Free push attack, a penalty corner or a free hit defense for this. I slowed that down to 5%. 5% and zoomed in, which obviously has made it a little fuzzier. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> happy three mom is very happy for that summary. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> Oh, and the look she gives is the same everyone gives the umpire when voting against. I know. I mean, at least you got to kind of go, okay. <laughs> I Look, it is so hard not to... If I didn't... Like, hearing it all the time, over and over and over again for the last three days for, I don't know, I've watched probably 30 of the... What are we up to? 48 matches? I've watched probably 30 of them and all of them call it a free hit. Every one of them. And also you've put in an extra vowel in my name. So Mr. Denman, stop it. You vote play on because they play too fast. Taco, amen. <laughs> this happened so incredibly fast. Free push from David. Um, there's the play. So when I saw this in real time, I, I was wrong. I'm not going to tell you which way I was wrong. I'm going to wait until you guys finish voting. And I just ended the poll. You're right. Oh, nine votes. Come on, you guys. You got to be faster than that. This is evenly split. <laughs> And you're not a mom, by the way? Okay, I'm not judging. You can go by whatever name you want. I'm like sexy hot millennial on half my Instagrams, but that clearly isn't who I am. Okay. So let me try to break this one down when I'm watching this. When you're watching this at speed, what you see is you see the New Zealander stick off the ball moving the Austrian stick out of the way. Sorry, so you see the black player who is the attacker and the ball carrier moving the Australians, the Austrians, the, def the white defender stick out of the way. However, if we just, if we just scroll back a little bit, let's just scroll back a little bit, right? Okay. So right here is where we start getting into some trouble. Okay, this can probably be a play on, but right at this moment, 
Like it's okay for the New Zealand player to be pushing this ball into the boards in this moment. That is not a shielding motion. That is, he's turned a stick that way because he's going to play it into the boards and try to, to try to sort of rebound it off because he's trying to get around the stick. The defender stick stays in without making contact with the ball and interferes with the New Zealand player stick. And then they continue along. So at first, I thought this was a stick block. I was, I, I told everyone in the watch party, oh, stick block. And I was wrong. So for me, this is either a very well-played advantage by both the umpires in this case, or you could have given the free push. The free push may have been the best option because that could have opened up and gotten this, this defender out of the way. 24 would no longer be able to be actively in this play because they'd have to disengage for the three meters. So actually the 33% of you who went with the free push, I think you were entirely correct. You're sending and you disagree with whether the black or the white makes a stick block. It, it's hard. This is a hard, hard situation. Like crazy difficult here. Maybe if I turn off my monitor, there we go. Now I won't look up anymore. Maybe, but yeah, an incredibly difficult, especially in real time. Crazy. Um, David, you voted PC by the way. Hey, I'd accept that. I keep looking up at my camera. I would accept a PC. That would be fine. I'm just waiting for the next comments to come up and then we'll move on to the next topic because we have seven minutes left. I thought indoor show, it'll be faster. Just like an indoor match. Can't be a Keeley hour. It has to be a Keeley indoor match, which means let's say it's 40 minutes, but it takes 50 minutes to play. So it would be an hour and 10 minutes. Maybe I didn't, I didn't manage to do that. Even if 5% speed, you're struggling to identify. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay. All right. We're off to the races. We're racing. Is this the right one? Playing the ball in the air. Yes. We'll go through these really quickly. Mostly because the clips are a little bit difficult. Like they're not... It's just and tough with this by. resolution and, and that sort of thing. Goalkeeper, Mateus. But just a couple of, of examples that we don't need to vote on because the footage isn't super clear because of the angles and because of where the, balls, the, the ball is vis-a-vis -vis the players and the angles. But as this ball is coming down, you know it's got quite a bit of bounce on this. And when the umpire makes their decision to blow the free push for the defense, I believe what we're seeing is the attacker making one of those stopping motions, bringing their stick over the ball and bringing it down to the ground actively. And as I explained, I don't know, at some point on a indoor themed stream that ball to stick is okay, but stick to ball is not. And that is where it, any, any control that's exerted over that ball that is in the air is gonna be deemed to be playing the ball in the air. But there you go. You can feel something Here's the next one out. again. Fagan answer with the shot, it's safe. And it is a penalty Not super corner. clear. Listen to the crowd. They but getting fired up. The Namibians are you can bet the Austrians aren't going to just be walking very, um, very patient to take this ball. PC if it wasn't very in. true. And again, and, uh, we've got a rebound the off the goalkeeper the and the so ball it... actually bounces up. So I've slowed this down to 5% again. Oh, we lost the stream for about five minutes. No wonder the comments were so quiet. <laughs> Oh, and look, this is the wrong camera as well. Okay, well this, now we're on the right one. 
Huh. I wonder if that was everybody. There we go. Stream stopped. See, I wasn't getting the comments through either. Huh. It's too bad because it was, those were the best five minutes of my life. I was so spot on. I didn't do anything wrong. The cameras all worked. All the technology worked. I said really intelligent things and I looked really cute while doing it. It wasn't letting you comment? Yeah, like that is weird. Holy smokes. What was the last thing you guys saw? I, I see on my, I've got this thing. I've got this thing right here. Oh, and I lost a whole bunch of people too. Here, let me just show you what this looks like. This is what YouTube shows me in the back end. And I think you can see there's a big dip, but of course I didn't see it at the time. It's black again. Oh, it's back again. David's been this. Well, I don't know what to do. It's been there the whole time. Happy mom. I'm going to guess that you're in North America as well. You've been there the whole time. Muhammad, very nice to see you. I'm, str I'm struggling because my camera turned off. So I'm looking at the wrong stuff. The New Zealand Australian stick walk was the last thing. Okay. So I just talked about these, th you know, the clips aren't very good. So I was talking about playing the ball in the air. Yeah, I know it's shocking, isn't it? But that's a hundred different, 108 different people coming in. It's okay. I'm not mad. I'm just glad anybody comes to watch. I'm still going to put it up on the screen though. Uh, you're in Australia, says happy through mom. Oh, well, it's gotta be a Europe thing. And you're in mass. Yeah, I know you're in the States. Huh. Okay. Let's go through one last play because it was interesting. We are going to pull this one. This is playing the ball while lying on the floor. Yes, I used a lot of words for this because Shot goes in, but the it is a has gone, plays the uh, it's a misnomer that we use when we talk about three and points of contact. The end of the game, despite the remonstrations from so, O'Connor, the South African skipper, go ahead with your options. Cat, the options are: okay. is this a, a free push for the defense? Wait, wait. Get to see. Free push red. Oh, we see a play on the knees, is this man. a penalty corner or a penalty stroke? Let's go for those three. Okay, so this could be a free push for the defense. You could determine that this is a dangerous ball by the attackers in this moment. As you heard, the horn went off. This is the last play of the game. It is a massive decision. Rachel's Rachel's taking responsibility for changing the numbers by just refreshing a browser. I appreciate that. I would never call Mr. Hunt a mouse. He's in mass. He's a mouse. Oh. Shot goes in, but the Hooter has gone. Play still allowed. And that will be the end of the game. Despite the remonstrations from O'Connor, the South African skipper. Okay, for let's it. go to this. Because that's still looping. Thank you very much, Kat. Sorry, that was the last one they didn't really get to. I'm, I am so intrigued to find out what happened. There's a big dip. A big dip, but that, that's showing my, me my concurrent viewers. Oh, wait, stream health. That's what I should have looked at. It says not connected? Am I gone again? Hmm. 
This makes no sense. Okay, well, I'll just pretend it's okay. Viewer activity, analytics, stream settings. You hear me fine. I've lost a ton of stuff though. And I've lost controls and I can't see the pole. There it is. Okay. I got it. Your comments are okay. For all of you who are new, it's, it's like an adventure. Instead of saying, oh my God, what a disaster. The technology failed. I just say, what fresh adventure am I going to have today? It, are my scenes going to blow up? Is my camera going to turn off? Is YouTube going to drop the stream? Is somebody going to file a copyright claim? Am I going to press the wrong button? Usually it's operator error friends, but today not so much. <laughs> it's, it is a miracle, isn't it? I mean, we get so used to this stuff, but when I started live streaming during the pandemic, I really took for granted the thought that I could reach out and sit here in Calgary and talk to people all over the world about umpiring. It was ridiculous. What a ridiculous thought. And I've been doing it for almost three years now, straight. So it's pretty cool. We can pretty much blame him for everything. Okay, a few more votes. Get your votes in on the polls, please. There you go. You can see the polls got 14 votes. That's not enough. Come on, 28 people. 28 people right now, and I want 28 votes. I am not budging until I get 28 votes on this poll. I don't care if you're guessing. Just give me something. Uh, I happy three mum. I hate Zoom with a passion. I hate Zoom so hard, you have no idea. What I do instead is I hold meetings in Discord. In my Discord server, fhempires.com forward slash DS is how you can find us. And we do voice channels that are dope. Ha, how you like that? Okay. It's so much more fun. It, you can play games in there. It's so much more casual. It's, it doesn't have this whole audio gets caught out and interrupted when certain people talk and it's easy to use. Like once you learn it, which takes you about five minutes, once you learn it, it's beautiful. So please come and join us and introduce yourself. I'd love to hear more about you, where you umpire, how you umpire. Get to know the fine people of this community because we have some really awesome, awesome folk. There you go. That works too. Does one defend or push the other to the floor? Non-intentional. Non-international or non-intentional. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who, it, that's not the point. And you can't see the poll at all. Interesting. Ad, good to see you. You just, you've been missing some crazy stuff. You still have the poll lost. So the poll's lost and that's the problem. Should we end it and start a new poll? Is that the best way to do it? Problem exists between keyboard and chair and keyboard is your favorite acronym, but it doesn't apply to me here. Well, there are many problems between this chair and this keyboard. There's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole chain of events here. I'm just saying. Okay, so Andrew, it's not a foul in the circle for the two defenders on the same team to be interfering with each other or obstructing each other or whatever, because you can't foul your own teammates. You can only commit fouls against the opposition because that's how you disadvantage the opposition because that's the only time we foul. Very circular, get out the rule book, read the section on
I mean, I might as well, right? I might as well just try all the tech. All the tech, because it's all broken anyway. Offense, an action contrary to rules, which can be penalized by an umpire. Um, and every foul, wait. Oh, somebody find it for me. It's just going to be that day, isn't it? I might specifically have caught in my head danger, but. Or it's probably 12.1. Everything comes back to 12.1. A penalty is awarded when a player or team has been disadvantaged by an opponent breaking the rules. That's the role I was looking for. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Back to the replay. It was close. Uh, let's see. Michael, hold me ransom and make me stream for 50 hours. That's going to happen when I go over there, isn't it? How are we doing with that poll? What's happening with the poll? Is everybody polling? Yorin, good to see you. Initially, the defender trips when she's already laying on the ground. She moves her stick towards the ball. So for you, it's a penalty stroke. Thank you, Yorin. I appreciate that. Happy for... Uh, happy three, mom. I showed off the photo of me after my indoor game on Sunday. After I'd scored a game-winning goal on my birthday. Yes, I do play. Even at my very advanced age. Some people also play like Denman in goal. Some are just superstar third teamers. Oh yeah. Many of us play, have played, continue to play. I play cause I'm too stupid to quit. Okay. Can I close the poll? Has everybody voted? All I can see is that 37% so far have voted for a penalty stroke. So I'm waiting. There's that thing. Over there. Also. <laughs> Some play, but not play an umpire, but not at the same time. Yeah, well, we may have seen an example with uh, Loreen. You play state hockey for Tasmania under 13. Congratulations. That is awesome. I know an umpire in Tasmania. His name is Derek Heather, Heatherton, Heatherington, Derek Heatherton. He's, he's part of the community. We don't see him very often, but he's there. So very warm welcome. I'm glad you're here and, and learning about hockey and wondering why umpires are so freaking amazing because you're going to be one of us you see 20 votes okay 20 votes is good for me it's still not 28 though 29 people right now 29 look it's 140 i gotta go i'm getting a migraine everything's happening i need to see 21 votes come on eight of you eight of you have got to vote and if you turned on the stream and you stepped away because you're vacuuming or you decided to take the dog out or you're, you're being held hostage. I still think you need to vote. And there's Denman pulling out the rule book about YouTube. Shh. Don't. What if, what if they are 13 now? Just cause they're playing under 13 doesn't mean that they're not 13. It depends on calendars and rules and let's not be all like that. We don't have to be the gatekeepers here. Luke, you're thinking a penalty stroke because you believe the defender was on the ground more than three points in contact and preventing the likely scoring of a goal. So Andrew, your point with the pushing was that the player on the ground was accidentally not in control of her actions and off balance. So the foul on the attacker didn't seem intentional. Okay, let's go with that. But what is the other half of 12.4? What is the other half of 
an offense by a defender which prevents the probable scoring of a goal. Or B is the intentional offense against an attacker who has possession or likely possession of the ball. C, Steven, you just mind your business. You mind your business. See? <laughs> Vote, voting is the most important thing, but maybe not. And Rado, come on. It's dangerous in the first place, he says. And that was the initial decision that the umpire made on the pitch. Oh, let me go back to the replay. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I'm glad you're here. So let me wrap up the poll. If you didn't vote, you've broken my heart. Just, just know this. Just know this feeling of despair in the pit of the black space, which would normally house a heart. That, that place is broken right now because you didn't vote. Oop. Damn it. And I lost it. Okay, I'm just going to do it again this way. It's recovery. So Rado's point, which is a valid one to make and something to discuss, is about the danger. Because obviously that's where uh, Milena had, I'm looking at the wrong camera again, that's where Milena was looking for, uh, that's why she was calling the free push for the defense in the first place. 27% of you are looking for a penalty stroke. And <laughs> Lee, you're blaming the, the keeper, which is totally fair. A lot of us would do the same thing. Um, and Robert, the stick block one, uh, you feel the decision is not a nine meter. Okay. Robert's, Robert's coming in from left field from a question that we already wrapped up. I appreciate you coming in and getting your two cents and you're probably watching like just maybe 20 minutes behind. In which case, welcome. But also I don't even know which one you're talking about because there's two stick block ones. Okay. And so Rado's point is the attacker shoots but does not look where it's going. At the international level at a PC, they know where it's going, says Denman. But there shouldn't be a person on the ground. And it doesn't matter if the defender's on the ground or with their stick horizontal. Well, so here's the thing, Rado. I think that had the player stayed on their feet, and then you have a question as to whether that's potentially a drill or not. But you have two players who are running out and they are using their body. I don't think there is a trip of either. I think they are literally going full bore to try to physically put their bodies in front of that ball. And I mean, they're, 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 they're both very happy with this. They're both running. And it's actually the player from behind. She's not tripped at all. Okay. And she's on the ground when it's played. I think it's very close. I can see why Milena went with the danger call for the drill. But the problem is, is that I don't see those players doing anything but running their bodies into the line of the shot. And because they're on the ground, yeah. And that's that's what, even what the South African player is, is hinting there. So they came back with a penalty stroke on this. So Milena took her time. She went over to Diego on the other side and they had a conversation. 
What I want you to think about though, it doesn't matter which way that this particular decision went. What I want you to think about are the principles. You're going to look at things like drilling. You're going to look at whether you feel the players are going to ground where they cannot use their bodies to play the ball and they cannot play the ball even without using their bodies. They can't do anything legitimately when they're on the ground whatsoever. And whether, when you weigh those two things out, does that mean for you in your particular fact situation that that would constitute a drill or it would constitute using their bodies on the ground? Okay, Ferrado, I hear what you're saying, that you don't, you don't feel it matters. And... It, yeah, it's it. I just wanted you to see both sides of that for sure. Consult with your colleague, work it through. It's a big decision and it's the best time that you can get to this. I think Rado's actually made a really good point here. And my own personal vote, I think, has actually slid the other way now to the drill. I'm not convinced when it actually hits the player if she's on the ground anyway. That was the last thing, but it's hard to see. Hard to see from from where we've got, from the angles that we have. We don't have as many angles as I think we should have at this level of competition, but there you go. Okay, wow, that's fun. And this is just, this is just so awkward. Yikes, it's a good thing that these cameras are pretty good, but not as good as that one at all. I'm going to end this because I feel super uncomfortable talking down into my computer, but I appreciate you all being here and giving me all of your feedback and input. There's a lot of great discussion today. Next week, I'm going to wrap up the rest of it. Apparently there were ton. Well, apparently there were some great games today. And this is what you have to remember with tournaments is that you start the tournament with lopsided matches because one plays eight or whatever the tournament format is. And then as you get to the end of the pool play, you've got the really tight matches. It's moving day. Everything's happening. Tomorrow is going to be chaos. Chaos. Okay. Because it's the last day of pool, I think. Do I have that right? I'm like, wait a minute. It's not, pool play hasn't ended yet, has it? I'm just opening up my calendar and seeing that Thursday there are still, yeah, tomorrow was the last day of pool matches. It's the day. It's the day where it's all going to happen. And then we get Friday, we get into quarterfinals and all that stuff. Okay. So don't, don't miss it. I've, I've lost, I've lost my window now. There it is. Okay. So we are having watch parties. If you are a yellow member of FHU 3T, you are a third teamer with us, then uh, I am not only running watch parties, but also just, yeah, I'm not gonna say that part. Just just come into the server, fhmpars.com forward slash DS, and you can find out more. And I appreciate all of your help and all of your conversation today. Thank you for bearing with my terrible camera and happy hockey this weekend. And we will see you next week. Bye for now.